Welcome back to Dewberry's Day. Today on Dewberry's Day, we're going to talk about forges. Today it's going to be something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to talk to you about my forge and about my anvil and about why I'm now getting into blacksmithing. So let's start looking at the forge. So this is the small forge that I purchased from forgebonus.com um, from Sam Fowler. Um, I've had it now for best part of two months um, it got a little bit wet outside that's why it's looking a bit rusty today but I wanted to show you the general principles of the forge um, how it's set up and how a junior person wanting to get into blacksmithing can do so at a relatively cheap cost so let me talk you through the forge let me talk you through um, how to set it up how it arrives um, what you've got to do to make it work um, and more importantly let's connect it all together and let's get forging so the forge. Forgebonus.com will send you either a pre-built or a flat packed version of this forge. Um, my one's pre-built and as you can see there's a number of face plates here and these have been tack welded together just to ensure that it stays together. Um, with regards to the burner it's a small burner. A friend of Sam's managed to weld this in for me uh, in preparation for, uh, for today. So what I want to do now is show you the bits and pieces that you get inside of the kit and then how you put it together. Uh, with the extra bits and pieces, uh, we have a couple of fire retardant bricks. Um, it looks like kale wool and some fire retardant bricks. We have to add those into the forge so the forge is obviously uh, safe from the temperatures that it'll get up to. So what I'm now going to do is uh, bring the forge down onto the floor, load it in with these various components and show you how I do it. So here is the forge as I just mentioned and um, what we're going to do, we're going to pick up the kale wool and put that in first. So as we turn the forge upside down you can see that the burner is connected into the forge here. I'll just show you that. So hopefully as you can see this is the bottom end of the burner and um, we're now going to put the kale wool in here to start protecting this area. The kale wool already has a divot cut out of it and that will fit against that burner. So we push it in, put it up against the top, make sure it's nice and square against the burner. There we go, that's the first piece fitted. The next piece we want to fit is the two uh, fire retardant bricks that go onto the side. Here are the two fire retardant bricks. So one will go on this side and one will go on the other side and obviously as it stands up more vertically this one will end up on the top here but for now I'll just sit it here. Okay, now we've got the uh, fire retardant bricks in, we're going to add the base bricks, which are also fire retardant but made up of a different material. Um, because these blocks are going horizontal, we're going to put these blocks in vertical. Okay, as you can see now, all of the bricks are added into the bottom of the, uh, the furnace and they're going to stand it up vertically. Remember to hold on to the bottom otherwise those bricks will fall out. Now I'll move one of these fire bricks to the other side. We now have a cavity here where the burner comes out and that's where we can start doing our forging. The next thing to add onto the forge is the various pipe work and the, uh, the various jets that uh, you need to connect to the burner. Now I'm no expert here but I do know you need an arrestor to protect yourself from the gas bottle which I'll show you in a moment. But you have to connect up the, uh, the top bit onto the top of the burner. You have a control mechanism here to allow the gas through and the other end goes onto your propane tank. Now I'm going to rig that up and then show you what that looks like. So as you can see I've now connected the top onto the burner and I just need to tighten this up to make sure it's nice and secure. The next thing we have to do is tighten up um, the regulator onto the propane cylinder. So connect it up and twist it to the left. As you can see it's twisted to the left on the propane. It'll then tighten up and as we did previously we'll use a spanner to make sure it's really nice and tight. The 
last thing I want to do is put a brick behind here to keep the heat inside of the forge and put a brick in front of the uh, cavity. The fire bricks are in place, I'm going to start the forge up. So you open the valve, you open the gas cylinder, and then turn the main uh, valve here to the left, and you'll hear the gas flow. Sorry, to the right, I beg your pardon. And light it. That's my first effort at a very simple key ring with a leaf and it's not perfect but that's going to be for Mrs. Doobes for our sixth wedding anniversary which is iron. I know it's not strictly iron but it'll be a lovely uh, handmade present for her. So guys as you can see I'm no expert blacksmith but with a little bit of uh, work from the forge, a little bit of work on the anvil you can make some basic gifts. It's one of those things, if you want to try and do blacksmithing, watch the videos, watch people like Alex Steele, watch Sam Fowler, go to forgeburners.com to get your forge, get yourself an anvil, get yourself some basic tools, a hammer, some tongs, if not you can make your tongs, and have a go. Another thing hopefully that you'll be able to have a try. Thanks very much for watching, um, please remember to subscribe up here, and there's some of my other videos up that side. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.